thank you very much. Um, uh, my talk is not as fun as the previous one, so I apologize in advance. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I just want to say that my slides also uh, kind of act as footnotes, so they are nothing to do with what I'm talking about. But please feel free to take photographs of them if you want to know a bit more about the philosophy that I'm talking about today. Um, so I'm going to start by talking about myself. Uh, so I'm a gay white Englishman. I was born and grew up in a town in southwestern England, lived for eight years in Manchester, and for the past six years have been in London. I've been to university four times, studying at three different universities. I'm a playwright, a researcher, and a LARPer. I have played, designed, and organized LARPs, have written plays, directed theatre productions, and attended and spoken at conferences. I'm currently studying for a PhD which considers uh, the thorny questions of representation, participation, and experience in LARPing. <clears throat> Why am I telling you this? Uh, this is more than just an introduction or me bragging about myself. Uh, all of the, the attributes, identities, and activities that I've listed are what uh, Alfred North Whitehead would call roots of inheritance. Uh, roots of inheritance are uh, pathways traced back through my history, through your history, through the history of every existing entity in the universe. These roots of inheritance are what I'm going to talk about. Uh, I want to consider what roots of inheritance come to bear in LARPing, and how we might consider them in processes of design, organizing, and play. And then this is just a bit about Alfred North Whitehead. Uh, feel free to read through it if you get bored of my voice. Um, so there are roots of inheritance uh, which each player brings with them in their personal history. There are roots of inheritance involved in the history of the play space. There are roots of inheritance that come through the design and organization of the LARP. To understand what I mean, let's consider the notion of a character. So, uh, Mika po uh, Poyola, I hope I, I apologize for my dreadful pronunciation, uh, <laughs> has described character uh, in one of the uh, Knut Punkt books uh, as an outside consciousness. Uh, so, this conceptualizes the character as an object, as an existing thing which I, as a subject, can immerse in. Uh, according to Whitehead's philosophy, though, I myself am not a pre-existing thing which exists with other pre-existing things. Instead, I am a process constituted by my relations to the other processes in the world and to my roots of inheritance, which are my relations to past processes. Uh, the image should not be of me caught in a network of relations so much as me being the network of relations. Equally so for a character. In other words, there is no character prior to its becoming as part of the network of relations, which is the LARP. So although the character design exists, the character itself does not before I embody it. Uh, a character then is not a stable object. It is rather a complex of roots of inheritance. These roots will be traced through the playing of the LARP and the integration of the character in relationships with other characters. But they will also be traced through the, the, the uh, player's reading of the character sheet and their subsequent thought processes about the character sheet. Through the design and the writing of the character, through various encounters with real and fictional people across a range of media, through cultural archetypes and conventions of power, status, and behavior, and through uh, the biases, prejudices, assumptions, and categorizations, which we as human beings cannot help but hold despite our be best efforts to think differently. For instance, when I played uh, the character Alan Olsen in Not Only LARP's Conscience last month, I received a character sheet. This character sheet contained an invented biographical details for the fictional character. However, though these details had been invented, they were not implausible or without precedent. In fact, the character is fairly ordinary. He runs a family business with his brother. Their father has just died. He has a wife and two daughters. He likes to blow off steam in a fantasy theme park once a year. This biography draws on cultural roots of inheritance 
uh, of American masculinity, uh, spousehood, uh, the idea of brotherhood, fatherhood, and business. It is intertextual as well, drawing on countless portrayals of American fathers, brothers, and businessmen in films, television, theater, literature, and games. These portrayals themselves draw in roots of inheritance, which finally connect them with real people and with archetypes, with the, the archetypes and people who act as a model for these representations. I cannot speak for the character writer. I don't even know their identity. But they may have personal experience of Americanness, brotherhood, fatherhood, etc., which has formed roots which they have drawn on in their design. I myself have internal roots pertaining to uh, brotherhood, masculinity, spousehood, in that I have experienced these things myself. I have been these things. However, I am not American. I have no offspring and have never run a manufacturing company. So the roots of inheritance pertaining to Americanness, fatherhood, and business come from witness, observation, assumption, and perhaps prejudice. As this makes clear, some roots of inheritance for my playing of this character were involved in directly felt experience, while others were drawn from indirect, perceived impressions. Uh, furthermore, my notions of what makes a good dramatic character come into play. This root of inheritance can be traced through my career as a playwright and theatre director, and through my engagement with various forms of storytelling expressed in a variety of media. From this analysis, it should be clear that Alan Olsen, as I played him, far from being a mantle that I can put on or a consciousness I can immerse in, is an integration of the various roots of inheritance drawn from the character sheet and my personal history. And it is these which I give to the scenes in which I play. Uh, this is not merely the obvious process of interpretation. It is not a question of me taking what I want from the design. It is an integration where neither I nor the character sheet has priority over the other. I do not slavishly attempt to recreate an idea the character writer had, but nor do I ignore any detail which has been given to me. There is a togetherness of me and the written design, my roots of inheritance and the writer's. I accept the uh, givenness of the character design, but also the givenness of the other roots of inheritance which go into making me this particular person at, in this particular moment. These cannot be prevented from affecting the character as I play it. No matter how much I deny myself, there is always bleeding. And because new roots of inheritance are formed during the playing of the LARP, there is bleed out too. The, uh, the, 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 the character has become part of my inheritance, part of the givenness of my reality. It is this togetherness with the character, togetherness with the LARP design, and togetherness with the environment and the other players, which I suggest characterizes LARPing. I should qualify this discussion by saying that uh, this relates to my own mode of playing. So everything I've uh, said here relates to my own experiences of playing. There are other possible modes of playing and other LARPing styles in which the players do take what they want or indeed where they expect to be served and experienced by the organizers. To use the tried and tested terms, if I am an immersivist, then these other modes might correspond to the gamist and the narrativist respectively. In these other modes, there will be integration of roots of inheritance too, but the importance of each root and the way in which it is integrated will be different. For the gamist, perhaps, what they give to the LARP is a certain competitiveness, while the narrativist must give their faith in the pre-planned plot. In any instance, roots of inheritance constitute the way in which we play. It's important to note that what I'm suggesting here is not that roots of inheritance are an aspect of LARPing, but that LARPing can be conceived of as the integration of roots of inheritance. What is the value of this analysis? If LARPing draws upon and develops along such networks of roots of, uh, of inheritance, how can we use them in designing, organizing, and playing LARPs? Roots, roots of inheritance are the potentialities given by the design, by the play space, and by the players themselves. I want to suggest that an awareness 
of what is given, given to us through our histories might promote awareness of our assumptions, biases, and prejudice, pre prejudices as designers. Thinking through other people's roots of inheritance might improve the, the, uh, how clear we are with the language we use when communicating with players. It might help us write better characters through our invention of their roots of inheritance. It might also make us able to play differently with our focus on what is given rather than what we want. Ultimately, what I suggest is that LARP design is not an object with, what, with which players interface, nor a simulated world in which they immerse. The process of LARPing is an integration of the player's roots of inheritance with the roots of inheritance traced through the design. It is togetherness with the design, togetherness with the play space, and togetherness with each other. Thank you.